Trade is struggling after the pro build collapse. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and I want to look at an article written by Alex Turner-Cohen which is discussing just the fallout of the pro build construction company collapse and the impact it's having on tradies. Now I've noticed in the comments some people... How should we put this? You know, not, well, indifferent or, or taking pleasure in these tradies whose businesses are getting hammered, you know, but saying, oh, these rich tradies in their rich cars or charging so much. Here's the thing, guys. They're small business owners. They're small business owners like you and me. They're small business owners that have the unfortunate situation where a big chunk of the cost of this job will probably go in materials on top of labor that they have to pay for, and they have to go and attach it to these buildings before they even get paid for it. So they could really be screwed. And it, builders, particularly big ones, they'll often stretch out paying you to just keep their cash flow going, particularly if they're in trouble. So you don't know how long ProBuild has been screwing them. And here's the thing. The lockdowns that occurred in Victoria and other parts of the country, it would take time for that damage to flow through to these businesses, for the delays to manifest, for the issues to come ahead. And that's kind of, you know, I suspect that's why we're starting to see this all just pull the plug now. So keep in mind, you're going to have a lot of people that'll be in a tough situation with this. And as an architect, that's one advantage I, I really have over the tradies. Uh, while I can relate to a lot of the, the, the frustrations of working in the construction game, my costs are associated to the stuff around me. Most of it is labor and uh, you know equipment rental software rental that type of stuff capex costs or, or ongoing expenses that are tied to projects not equipment and material costs as well so tradies speak out after the pro build construction company collapses pro build and 17 other aussie companies have taken workers by surprise with many left unable to support their families now i can relate to this very much Back when we first started our business, we were doing a whole lot of stuff in the mining sector. You know what? I'll I will bring up. Let's go to let's go memory time. We'll go to the Heiser Architecture website, and we can see right, right down here. You know these type of projects. Can I magnify it? There we go. You know, mining jobs, and you know they they were great jobs. They were really good. They they there was an element of coordination that you had to resolve technical problem solving some challenges there you actually had to cut them all into pieces and make sure it met all the the legal and safety requirements aesthetically i mean they're not very attractive everyone i think the most exciting thing is one of these big bathhouses we managed to get some colored lockers in there but they were you know great jobs for a firm starting out you know we we do a, variety, a lot of stuff actually this is a nice job we just finished now we've got our next school job currently underway. This, this stuff, this stuff uh, came about because of the skills we developed in here. So, but when we were doing the mining stuff, we'd have like 80% of our revenue coming from one client. One client. And this, this would be me, Rachel, then we'd take four people, then I'd have to hire another two people because they'd just be pumping us from work. They'd, you know, I think at one stage, Hutchies, who we were working with then on this stuff, had half a billion dollars of work and we were working with them on a whole heap of these mines, like hundreds of millions of dollars. So that's the problem. When you're a small business and you're working for one of the big boys, they can, it, it can be a lot of time, energy invested in there because you've got to keep servicing them. You've got to do the right by your big client because, well, they'll feed you more work, and if they pull the pin, you're kind of screwed. That's the problem. So I... I was always pushing to bring more work in and a diversity of work in from different clients and different sectors. And that was that was quite the challenge as a small firm. A small firm, we, we tend to go more on the commercial side of things and the industrial and, and mining camps and those type of stuff. Housing, the little housing, sure, we do a little bit of it here and there, but it's, it's uh, either you've got the high-end bespoke architectural houses and that's where people have the big money and we don't really have the connections uh, you know, personal relationships in that sector. 
Uh, or you've got the spec homes, which are the homes that everyone needs, the little extensions, that type of stuff. And there the fees are really tight, really tight. Like, like um, well, you know, a draftees will do a house for 500 bucks, guys. 500 bucks. Yeah. It's not even, I can't cover my insurance costs for that, let alone make a profit. But that, that's the challenge. And that's where I can understand where some of these tradies may be working on these big jobs. They've got all their time, their energy, their boys, the whole team working on it. It's keeping them busy. And if it just pulls the plug, it could be the money that you could be waiting on in those invoices may have already been spent. That's the worst thing. You know, you've got 100 grand outstanding in invoicing about to come in and it's, they're just dragging it out. And you've already spent that money and some. So, staff and contractors for building giant pro build have been left reeling after the major construction company abruptly announced it had gone bust. On Thursday, South African Corporation WBHO confirmed it was entering voluntary administration. It acts as the parent company for ProBuild, as well as 18 other building businesses, prompting thousands of Australians to become unemployed in an instant. While ProBuild directly employs 750 staff, thousands more are working as subcontractors and they are concerned. And that's, that's the challenge of being a small business owner where you're dependent on one client. Almost, almost like our country, you're dependent on one other nation. You've got to get multiple streams coming in. That's kind of where now I've, I've stepped back. My business, the scale has completely changed. It's more what we can manage ourselves, uh, Rachel and I, and we'll get occasional help in. And uh, I'll be a lot picky about who I work for. Because nothing's worse than really fighting to get work, bringing a job in, really happy, and the, the drafties or architects turn up their nose going, oh, I don't want to work on that. Yeah. Managers inform tradies. They have a week to collect their tools at pro-built sites across Australia, including 13 projects in Victoria, three in New South Wales, one in Queensland and one in WA. One man who wanted to remain unnamed informed news.com.au that pro-built owed his contractor firm hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. The dad said he had a wife and kids to support and then that he had been contra- subcontracting with the company for the past five years. 40% of the workforce is casual. They'll go, the man warned. They'll be out of work. Luckily, my firm has some other projects. He wasn't the only one frustrated by the sudden collapse of the company. A peeved contractor said the situation was tough and that everyone just wanted their jobs back. He called the company a shark, adding, it's all a big game. The anonymous worker was at a previous company that went bust six months later. I was, went bust, but six months later, they had set up again under a new name. Completely debt-free, something he said happens frequently in the construction industry. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I, I've seen that. It, it's, it's, it's bullshit. I mean, I, I've been fortunate. I've had, in what, nearly 10 years of business now, I've only had two people stiff me on invoices. One was a dodgy developer guy, and the other one was a, a family that had a little restaurant. And... This restaurant, it's funny, they couldn't speak English when we were having our meetings in the office, but then they suddenly could when I rocked up there wanting my money back. So we've been pretty fortunate. But, I mean, it, it's not to say we haven't had people stretch out invoices or just not pay to kind of, you know, pressure you for things. This is the, the situation in the construction industry. It can get really messy with regards to responsibilities. Uh, and as an architect you'll have to design something in a way to meet certain legislative requirements or for workplace health and safety or life safety situations. And if you're working for a builder on a design and construct contract, they may just ignore it and still want you to sign off on stuff. So you've got to, you know, it, it's tough. It's challenging. A challenging game to be in. So you've got to find good people to work for with. Uh, that's, that's probably the one lesson I've learned over the last 10 years of business is finding good people to work with and having... Freedom of time and flexibility is probably more important than growing a big business, at least in architectural practice. At least that's my, pers- my perspective I've taken away. Another contractor said he had come, under, had come from a previous job where the company had also gone under. He thought he could rest easy at ProBuild, one of Australia's largest construction companies. None of us knew this was coming, he added. Ah, oh, bugger. That, that sucks. When you're going through something else and you think, okay... 
It's all good. Deloitte has been appointed as administrator to handle the fallout. The construction industry is facing serious headwinds from skyrocketing prices and COVID-induced delays. ProBuild raked in $1.3 billion in revenue and made $4 million in profit last year. But the 443 Queen Street project, which involved high-quality apartments, has hemorrhaged as much as $120 million. ProBuild Constructions reportedly injected $15 million into the company last year as part of a recapitalization to combat Queensland Division's losses. There you go. It's believed ProBuild's collapse will have far-reaching ramifications across the entire construction industry in Australia. An insolvency expert said ProBuild's demise would also have a chilling domino effect on the sector. Damn. Sorry, everyone. We're all a bit sick at the moment. Uh, we've got a cold. No, it's not COVID. Don't worry, it's not that exciting. It's just a normal, old-fashioned, annoying cold r- racing through the family. And we also have rain. It's been raining for days here, and it's probably going to rain for another week, <laughs> which really sucks because my steely wanted to come in and pin the steel to my house yesterday. And I said, mate, you can't come out here. You know, I'll send you photos of it. There's water. There's no way you could work with the, uh, with the rain here. It would be impossible. Kind of frustrating. Weather delays. So that's why I'm, I'm coughing occasionally in the videos, everyone. So Andrew, Andrew Spring, partner in an insolvency firm, Dursch Sutherland, previously told News.com the collapse of one of Australia's largest builders would cause natural fear throughout the industry and create heartache for the subcontractors as the financial distress flowed through the chain to hit each level. People will be reviewing contracts and looking at where they can protect their own interests and the idea of helping each other through it is less likely when the confidence level drops. That's that's the problem. It's going to be dog-eat-dog. Everyone has to protect themselves. ProBuild is one of only a handful of major builders in Australia that can complete large-scale projects. The firm is behind several iconic recent builds, including the Melbourne Convention Centre, the new Victorian Police Headquarters, as well as Sydney's new Glass IMAX building in Darling Harbour. So, let's have a talk about this one, guys. This is a shame. And we're going to see more of it. We're going to see more of it. More businesses are going to go under. I reported a few days ago that personal insolvencies is being led by the construction sector, and that's just going to pick up. There are going to be people who this will tip them over the edge. Now, what you have to realize that if you're in a tough financial situation, you need to look at your, your finances. You need to cut back all your expenses. You need to learn what is actually a luxury. You'll be amazed at what you can go without. This is speaking from personal experience. Now, you don't want you don't want this to lead to people making rash or stupid decisions. Because it's just material possessions, it's just money you can build up again. That that's the that's the real the concern I have from all of this stuff, from all the negative news, that's the worry. You know, that people are gonna do something stupid. And particularly for men, we're more prone to do something stupid, run off and act like an idiot because we feel like we've failed or there's no hope, and particularly because uh, the masculine, masculine identity is so tied to your achievement and often for your ability to be a provider to your family. Maybe that's not politically correct, but, you know, it's bloody true. So reach out to any mates you have that may be in this situation. For those of you that are going through it, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Just may be a bit of a bumpy, bloody road there. One strategy is if you've wound up in a situation where you're, you're kind of screwed financially because these guys are screwing you over, they're falling over, you're too dependent on one sector, is you need to find a way to diversify your income streams. Even if you have passive income just trickling in from something else, you know, 50 bucks here, 100 bucks here, every little thing can help. You'd be surprised how, you know, how much of a stress relief that can be. And then the goal is to build that up to the point where you're not completely dependent on this one sector. What do you reckon? Anyway, guys, let me know your hints, tips, and suggestions in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon. 
eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband, and you can buy our merch from Heiser Says. Take care, and I'll point you to a recent video about another Melbourne builder that's gone under. Not related to Pro Build, but still, still a bit concerning. Take care, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.